Hi everyone, welcome to AC Day One. I hope you enjoyed that little pick me up music this morning. And um, I see more attendees are joining us this morning, so that's awesome. Our numbers are at 133 right now. So welcome AC Day One, everyone. And this is your session for a guide to getting and staying organized. We are thrilled you're here and we are so excited to kick off the fall semester with you. We have a ton of exciting free events for you today and all of the details can be found on the Algonquin College orientation website. And um, if you haven't had a chance to see the full website, we'll be adding the link to the chat right now. So to kick things off, my name is Bonnie and I am the special events officer at Algonquin. And um, before we get started, I just wanna go over a few um, housekeeping items with you. This session is closed captioned. So if you do require that along the bottom of your screen, just click the CC button there for you. And we do ask all of our attendees to stay muted um, during the session, um, but we do encourage you to keep your cameras on because we wanna see your faces. We wanna see who's tuning in for AC day one and we want you to connect with um, each other because it is the start of the fall term. And if you have any questions, feel free to enter it into the chat box there. And um, one of our event facilitators will definitely be able to help you out. So if you have any questions, any tech questions or any um, questions about this session, just throw it in the chat box there and we'll definitely be able to help you out. And um, to begin, we actually have two gifts that we wanna give away to everyone. So how we are going to do this is, I'm gonna give everyone a chance please open, if you haven't done so already, open your chat box and I'm going to be asking a question and we are all going to submit our answers at the same time. So have your chat box open there if you haven't done so already. I believe it's along the bottom of your screen, bottom left or so. And I do still see a few people entering the session, so I'm just gonna give it a minute. We have two more people entering into the session here. So everyone have your chat box open and I'm gonna ask you a question, type out your answer, but don't press send yet. We're gonna all send our responses at the same time. So the question for you today is, if you could only accomplish one thing today, what would it be? And again, don't press send yet. So if you could only accomplish one thing today, what would it be? So I'll give everyone a couple of seconds to enter in your answer there. Don't press send yet. And this is awesome. I see everyone thinking and putting in their answers right now. Okay, so on the count of three, we're gonna send. So one, two, three, send. Oh my gosh, these answers are just streaming in. So again, the question is, if you could only accomplish one thing today, what would it be? Let's see here. A lot of staying organized, so this is the right session for you today. <laughs> stay organized, stay organized, wow. Have a dinner with my friend, organized, organized. Graduating, being confident. This is awesome and I, I see so many responses about staying organized here. Perfect. These are awesome answers. Thank you, everyone. And our two gift cards today are to Connections, the campus store, and we have a very special guest who's joined us for today's session, and he will be choosing two attendees at random who we will be giving the gift cards to. And so um, we are joined by Algonquin College's president and CEO, Claude Brule. So I'll give it over to Claude to do his quick little introduction, and then he will also announce the two winners. And then we will private message you um, just to ensure that those gift cards get sent over to our two winners today. Over to you, Claude. Thank you, Bonnie. Good morning, everyone. As Bonnie said, my name's Claude, and I'm your president. I'm delighted to welcome you today virtually to your um, fall term, your 2020 fall term. And I know this semester is looking really different. Um, if this is your first time in post-secondary, uh, hopefully you've had a chance to 
interface through Zoom in the past. It, hopefully this isn't your first time, but if, it's, uh, if it is, uh, you'll very quickly get used to uh, working with technology uh, because that's how we're going to interface uh, a fair bit of the time this fall. We're going to be operating in hybrid mode, which means that uh, whenever we can, we're going to teach remotely. And for those things that are essential uh, for you, for your hands-on applied learning that you need to, to have, um, as per your timetable, you'll be asked to come on campus for those things. So some of you, you may not need to come on campus at all. Some of you may need to come on campus once in a while. And um, we'll want to make sure that uh, you're able to do that safely. Um, we're all here to support you, your teachers, your program coordinators, our support staff, uh, everyone in the administration are here to uh, help and uh, make sure that uh, you're successful with your semester. So first of all, I wanna thank you. I wanna thank you for choosing Algonquin College for your uh, post-secondary hopes and dreams. And I look forward to uh, being able to see you either virtually like we're doing now or on campus for those of you who will be able to, uh, to come on campus. So you've chosen well by choosing Algonquin College. We've got a stellar reputation. We have great programs of studies. And I know I've already welcomed some of you this morning at some of your uh, introductions uh, to your program of studies. So if you're seeing me for the second time again today, hello again. Uh, I'm very proud. Uh, I hope you feel that pride as well of being uh, part of the Algonquin family. I've been at the college for over 21 years and uh, the start of the new year for me is always very special. I see students being a little nervous, anxious. I see them over time making lifelong friends, uh, turning your dreams into reality and uh, getting the career uh, of your dreams after having gone through our program. And I see you grow personally and professionally. So I'm really looking forward to watching your journey. All right, so now it's time to announce our two lucky students who will receive a $50 gift card to our connections, which is our campus bookstore. So I've picked two names at random here, and I'm going to read them. Um, first name is uh, Jessica Cuttingham. I hope I pronounced that right, Jessica. And the uh, second person is uh, Isha Kotisha. So that's uh, K-O-T-E-C-H-A. So Isha I hope I pronounced that right as well. So our, our event hosts will be contacting you via chat on the Zoom for the coordinating detail. Again, thank you everyone. Uh, please continue to chat, ask questions, introduce yourself, uh, learn a ton on this particular session with Carol and uh, get some great skills for staying organized. Have a great day everyone. Awesome. Thank you, Claude. And congratulations <laughs> to Jessica and Isha. Um, be sure to check the um, chat box and I will be private messaging you both. So again, that's Jessica and Isha. And now, um, without further ado, I would like to welcome our event facilitator, certified life coach, Carol Blackburn, to lead us through a guide to keep you organized. Carol will share some key tips on how to prioritize, schedule group meetings and develop routines to help you reach and achieve your goals. Over to you, Carol. Thank you so much, Bonnie. And uh, thank you, Algonquin College, Claude, uh, Michelle, everybody for inviting me to be here with you today. Uh, I'm really excited uh, for you. This is um, a very unique start to the school season, to your semester. And uh, I think that um, uh, Algonquin has done a phenomenal job in uh, giving you the tools and resources that you need to uh, get started on the right foot. So thank you and uh, I really appreciate being here. Um, I am uh, Carol Blackburn. I am a life coach, uh, entrepreneur. I do workshops like this for all different types of businesses and I run my own as well. And I'm a motivational speaker. I am also a uh, mom of two, a single mom of two. One, I just sent off to school today for the first time. So <laughs> yeah, it's scary, um, but uh, he's going into grade seven. I have a daughter who's starting grade nine next week. So I get all the feels about starting school, especially in this new um, climate that we're in right now. So I'm really excited to be here with you and uh, get started on our topic. So uh, what you can expect today is that we're going to talk about some of the fundamental tips to help getting you started in um, 
uh, you know, in establishing really good habits uh, and getting organized for your semester and your year ahead. We're going to be setting intentions, how to set really good intentions for your goals and prioritizing what needs to get done so you can try to avoid overwhelm and some stress and anxiety that comes up with that. We're also going to break it down into action steps that you could take for weekly and monthly goals. And then um, we're going to do a Q&A at the end. However, I'm an interactive person, so I'm going to probably pause every once in a while to ask if anybody has any questions because I want it to stay top of mind for you. And I want to be able to um, ask you uh, to answer any questions that you have and that you're not missing anything. And um, I want to be here for you. I'm here to serve you. So make sure you have a notepad ready, get your pens ready, get your hands, your typing out, whatever it is, because there's going to be a lot of information that I'm going to send to you here. And uh, I just want you to get what you need out of this. So um, having really good organizing, organizational skills is essential. I can't stress that enough. And um, <clears throat> I don't want you to feel too overwhelmed about it if you're not sure how to get there because you're going to develop the skills as you continue to grow. And everybody's very unique in how their mind processes information and how we plan and organize. Your overall quality, quality of life will actually improve the more organized that you are. <clears throat> so um, to eliminate a lot of stress and anxiety, you know, key points into, into figuring out really good habits is important. And uh, before we go any further, I'm going to ask Bonnie if she wouldn't mind launching our poll. I just want to get a good understanding of what's happening with, uh, with what you're doing right now. So do you currently use a planner, agenda, or a calendar? And if you want to select one of those answers there, paper, agenda, or planner, if you're digital, uh, you use your calendar or apps, uh, both or none of the above. So I'll give you guys a minute to answer that poll. I know for myself, I like to use both. I'm a paper and digital person and I'll talk about that and what the importance is for that. Some people are strictly digital, some people are just paper, which is fine. And some people don't have any, which is okay too. We're gonna, we're gonna help get you guys started on that. All right, I think we're good now, Bonnie, if you wanna share the results. Wow, okay, look at that. So we have about 30%, which takes the lead, who are paper, agenda, and planner. Uh, digital, we're, you're just coming in at a close 27% of you, which is great. 28% um, do both, yay. Love it. And we have 14% none of the above. And that's cool. We're good with that. We're going to share some tips and hopefully you'll be able to, um, uh, to get on, you know, one of these, uh, either digital or paper or both. Um, and, uh, and, uh, we'll, uh, we'll get you started on some skills. So let's jump into it. So setting yourself up for your, uh, success and some key tips that I wanna share with you. And if I keep looking off to my screen here, it's because I have my notes, I have a lot of information to share with you and I don't wanna miss anything. So what I do recommend for those of you who are not um, using any type of planner, agenda, or calendar, is that you do invest in a really good one. Um, something that potentially has space for you to write down your goals and your to-dos for the month ahead. And I'll share one that I use, which is something that I picked up at Chapters. Um, it's from Fringe, and I'm gonna go to a clean sheet here. And what I like about it, I don't know if you could see this, guys, is that it lays out the entire week. Okay, so Monday to Friday, and then you have your weekend. Um, and what I like about it is that I can write down all of my important things that need to be done, appointments, if I have client sessions, if I have, um, any important content that I need to write for my social media or whatever it is that's pertaining to my business, I have it laid out. And so I could see the week as it's, 
as it's laid out and that I'm not putting any guesswork into what's happening. And I don't catch myself off guard. Um, you know, if there's something really important happening on Thursday and I'm just focusing on Monday or Tuesday, um, seeing the whole week laid out gives us some really good insight into how we're uh, visualizing how our week's going to go and that we're, we're actually subconsciously preparing ourselves for what's coming down uh, throughout our week. So I really do um, uh, like really recommend you invest in a good one. I know that they do have specific um, uh, planners for students. So you can look online, um, Indigo or any, you know, type in like student planners for 2020, 2021. Um, and I know that they have them available. Again, if they have the week laid out, um, then that is beneficial. So then that way you can really focus on ensuring that all of your events are put in place. Um, I also, and this is just a small tip, when you're writing in your planner, use the pencil because <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of erasing and changing and moving things around and you don't wanna have ink all over it, it looks messy, you're white, you know, using a lot of white out, or if you don't have it available, these, that's a small tip is that I use a pencil so that I can erase things if I need to move any um, of my to-dos or appointments around. Um, when you use a calendar efficiently, it really frees up a lot of space in your brain, okay? So you're not relying on memory to, uh, to make sure that you're getting everything done because that can be very stress inducing over time, especially if you have assignments, if you have group meetings, um, if you have a call with your professor or another peer that you need to get in touch with, or if you have to work, whatever it is, all of these things take up a lot of space in your brain. So if you transfer that to a place that you can rely on to look at throughout the day, it takes that that um, the, the stress of having to remember everything. And so it's really important that you use that uh, efficiently. And so what I like to do as well is um, I like to have my phone. So my calendar in my phone is also my digital reminder of all the important events that are coming up as well. So I flip between both. I make sure that my digital, you know, if you're out, and you need to set an appointment, it goes into your phone. And then when I get home, I transfer everything to my paper agenda. So I use both hand in hand. Another good tip that you want to ensure that you have um, is you, you want to have a designated workspace wherever you are studying. Um, and that is your desk, whether it's in the corner of your bedroom or in your living room, um, wherever that is. A designated workspace helps to keep you organized. It helps to keep all of your things in one place. And it, um, it just keeps, um, uh, it keeps you on track with not having to blend your at-home learning with your home life as well. Um, all of us have had to really adjust to working and learning from home. And sometimes if it blends too much with our living space, it can, we can feel out of sorts. So having a designated workspace is really important. And I know it can be a challenge, especially if you're living in uh, shared accommodations. But, you know, just having a nice little desk, have all your stuff, your, your tools, everything you need for school um is really important to have it in one space and that way you don't lose your stuff it's not going astray getting blended in with someone else's things if you're living with someone else or if you live at home or whatever the case may be uh, one of the questions come here do you have recommendations for calendar apps i use the one um i i, I use the one right on my iphone um, it works really really good for me and uh, the google calendar works well um, if you have that uh, there are other apps out there, but I say simple as possible. Keep it simple. So if you already have an app on your phone, um, you don't necessarily need to download anything new. Just learn how to use yours to its fullest. So adding reminders or alerts if you have a class that's starting and um, um, yeah, and you know, you need to make sure that you're at your workspace to get ready for your class. I usually set a 10 minute alert before anything. And I know that your school also has 
online learning and resources, your workspace where you're actually doing your, your, um, your programming. So make sure that you're checking all the functionalities that they have to offer as well. So, um, so uh, you can utilize whatever is gonna work best for you. Okay, I hope that answers your question all right. Um, okay, so here's another tip for getting and staying organized is try to establish a really good daily routine for yourself, which includes waking up at the same time every day. And this is really important because you're getting your body ready, prepared for what your day looks like. We've all been kind of flip-flop for the last five and a half months. And, um, you know, our bodies have not been on a normal rhythm. Some of you may have been, which is phenomenal. I know for our household, it we haven't had um, set times to wake up, go to bed. It's just been all over the place. So we have already started preschool to get back into a normal um, time to go to sleep and a normal time to wake up. Regardless of when your classes start or when your meetings start, getting good habits of waking up at the same time each day will really, really make a difference for you and getting quality sleep at the same time. Um, putting all of your um, important uh, dates into your schedule should be first and foremost for you. So as soon as you know that you have an event or something is coming up, uh, whether you work your work schedule, um, if you like to work out, you need to get that in your calendar as well. You're time blocking all of that space so nothing else will take over. You need to prioritize what's important for your day. And so, um, so if you have a job, a part-time job, and you have a shift on a particular day, you need to block that out. If you have um, a Zoom meeting with some of your peers, or you have classes throughout your day, time block it. It needs to own its own space so that nothing else can take over. I hope that makes sense. I'm just gonna check the comments for uh, the chat for any um, questions. Yeah, color coding. Okay, so somebody asked, do you recommend color coding important stuff in your planner? Uh, would that help in any way? That is absolutely a personal preference. Um, it's something that some people need to color. So if you color code, you could do something like uh, class time. Uh, if you have a meeting, if you have um, work, you can color code. Some people really, really find it helpful because your eye will, will no, your brain will process your, your color coding. So absolutely, but it's personal preference, okay? Um, but yeah, for some people, it really is quite helpful. Okay, so don't forget, I know I already mentioned this, but schedule in your workout time, body breaks, get outside. Online learning is really, can be quite uh, taxing on our bodies and we need our mental and physical health. So it's really important, even if you just get out for a 20 minute walk or your hour workout or spin or whatever it is, make sure you're moving your body because there's a mind body connection that we can't ignore. And um, especially you're not moving around a campus. You're not moving from classes. You're not, you know, um, going from your mode of transportation to your building or whatever it is. So just be cognizant of the fact that your body needs that time. And, um, and, and make it a priority every day, 20 minutes to an hour. If you like to do more, go for it, but make sure that's part of your, of your um, habits and routines as well. Um, I also wanted to um, ensure that you are uh, eating properly as well. Healthy habits, have snacks ready to go. I am a um, Sunday meal planner. <clears throat> I prep and cut my vegetables, everything. I plan my meals for the week. I find that extremely helpful um, because it helps, again, to take, it, it takes away the time that you have to stop and meal prep and it's ready to go. You don't have to put too much thought into it and you're not ignoring the nutrition that your body needs, again, to support your brain function. So sleep habits, moving, eating properly, all of that helps to support you. It's not just about um, having a really good planner or a really good calendar. It's overall quality of life. And you will develop really good habits when you just start, okay? It doesn't, I don't want you to, to become overwhelmed with doing too much all at once. 
make these habits easy for yourself. So if you are someone who likes to wake up first thing in the morning and, um, and uh, you know, um, the first thing that you do is jump online, maybe, you know, grab something to eat or, you know, get, take a body break or whatever it is just to get things moving, stack those habits so that they become really easy for you. Okay. There's a really good book out there called Atomic Habits by James Clear. Uh, and it talks about just doing 1% a day, 1% change a day towards your habits and establishing really good habits is all you need to do in order to see the build of the momentum of really um, becoming uh, successful in your habits. Habits support everything. You have good habits in place, all the organization will fall into place because you're clear of mind and uh, you know how to prioritize yourself. Um, okay. <clears throat> So setting your attentions for your academics um, is important. So this is a good uh, time to um, grab a journal. If you have one, if not, you can get journals from pretty much anywhere. Um, get a good journal, something with line sheets. No, um, it doesn't have to be a calendar. And this is a good place for you to stay connected to the whys, your whys around what your academic um, goals are for this term or for your year. When you understand your whys, you will stay really, really focused on prioritizing and not getting too busied with all the to do's um, that could be quite overwhelming. Okay, so what are your long term goals? So if you think long term, and we're gonna we're gonna break it down to let's say semesters because that's it's easy. It's it's you know there's a start, there's a finish. Um, and for some of you, you may be continuing on into the winter. Regardless, you know, you just need to um, uh, make sure that you're, you're not thinking too far ahead because that, again, it can be overwhelming when we want to reduce that. So what are your long-term goals? And this, your journal is a good place for you to brain dump, okay? Write down the type of experiences that you want to have. Write down, um, you know, how do you want to grow? in the years to come? What do you want to learn? What are your, um, how do you want to support yourself? Okay, what's going to be good for you? What type of change do you want to see? What are the results that you wish to have? And um, it's good to have the, you know, you brain dump, you put it all out on paper. And then from there, you break it down into bite size, achievable, manageable goals for yourself. Okay. Does that make sense? If you have any questions about that, just drop it in the comments right now. If you'd like, I'll just take a moment and stay hydrated too. That's very important. Okay, so um, and then of course, what resources do you currently have that are going to support you in your goals? And what are the type of resources that you need to look for? Okay. So um, I know that uh, for many of you who are like new, like post-secondary, you're just coming out uh, into the college scene, um, it, it can be a big transition for you. Um, you're really responsible for making sure that you're staying on track. But if you don't know where you're going, that can be really difficult to, um, to understand your whys behind it. And this takes, does take time, but I do recommend that you, uh, you know, stay top of mind, keep those, those goals for yourself top of mind. <clears throat> do we have any questions at this point before we move on? Hi, Carol, it's Bonnie here. I see um, Riley just put in a question there right in the chat. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, we're gonna talk about that right now. So Riley writes, any tips on better, compartmentalizing when um, juggling assignments, <clears throat> excuse me, and tasks for classes. That's going to be my next point. We're going to talk about planning for your week ahead, and then we're going to move into planning for your um, month ahead. So good timing on that one. Okay. So um, what I tend to do, uh, what's worked very well for me, is that I use Sunday as my planning day for the week coming up. 
So I look at my class, oh, 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 I don't go to class, but I'm gonna speak <laughs> as if I'm in your shoes. <laughs> I was once there, as a long time ago though. Um, so I would look at my course load, what's coming up. What are the most important assignments that need to get done quickly? Soon, okay, because you're already going to have those events in your calendar. We kind of talked about that at the beginning. Those events, okay, your assignment due dates, your um, online call, your Zoom calls with your peers or professors, or however it is that you're doing this. It's really important that they, again, they take they take up the space in your calendar. Okay, you want to know what your deadline is. Okay, if that makes sense. So. What you should be doing then is looking at your tasks for the week and saying, okay, so I know I have an assignment due on Friday. How much time am I going to need to work on it? And then you work backwards through your week. Okay. So if you know that you have an assignment due on Friday, it's really important that you start working on that, you know, several days or a week in advance. So you time block again, how much time you need to designate towards that one specific task, if that makes sense, towards that one specific um, uh, event that you have going on. And that means that you also have to transfer your digital calendar into your planner, if that makes any sense. Again, you want to see what your week looks like. I'm just going to go to the comments because I do see uh, quite a few things in there. Um, sorry. Okay, one comment says, I find it difficult to organize tasks and events and due dates, personal and any important info all in one place and not get overwhelmed. Okay, that's why, again, it's really important that you time block. So anytime something, if you know in advance what your schedule is going to look like, it needs to live in your calendar. It needs to take up real estate in your calendar. If it doesn't, that's where the overwhelm comes in and you're going to start to miss really important things. That includes personal commitments. That includes shifts at work. It includes, you know, um, you know, anything that's really important because if you time block, you're not, you're going to look at your day saying, you know what, I can't fit in this coffee with you tomorrow. How about we do it on Thursday because I have more of an opening. You understand you have to really um, be, you have to put boundaries around your time as well. And if school is priority for you, you absolutely have to put that top of list. Okay, I hope that answers your question. I um, just wanna make sure I didn't need anything. Okay. Hi, Carol, Bonnie again. There was Hi, one more Bonnie. question here. Yeah? Um, any tips on setting goals for things that are not time sensitive? Yes. And depending on what that goal is, again, writing it down, brain dump. As soon as you put it on paper, it becomes um, real. Okay. It's not just an idea that's floating in your head. It's something that you, you may not uh, be doing. It may not be starting today or tomorrow. You know, it's going to be coming down the road, but again, it's that mind connection that you're making to that goal. When you see it, it is, it's, it starts to um, take formation, if that makes sense, okay? Um, so setting your goals for the week, making sure that you're planning your week, and uh, it's, it, again, prioritizing without overwhelming your day, okay? So here, I'll give you an example. We all have the endless to-do list of a million things that we need to get done. But what you have to be aware of is what's important that is a priority. So having a to-do list is great because it's running, okay? And that's why in some of these calendars or agendas, at the beginning of the month, they have, what are my goals? What is my to-do list? And then what you do then is you take one or two things that are a priority and you make it an event in your, in your day. Does that make sense? So what you're doing is you're breaking it down. You're taking the endless to-do list because some of those things may not be as important and you want to be able to prioritize what is important, okay? You will eventually get to that to-do list. However, on the flip side of it, 
some of those things where you thought were really important, a couple of weeks down the line or a couple of days down the line, you're like, you know what? I didn't need that. I didn't have to do that. I, you know, I, that's not something that's important. So it comes off your to-do list or it goes down to the bottom. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, good. Awesome. There's a question. What should you do if you struggle to focus and remember to organize things? Again, it's developing a habit. And if you're not used to it, if that is something that you're not used to, that is something that um, you develop that habit as it goes. Okay. It's something that it's a learned experience. The more you do it, the better you become at it, then it takes up less of the uh, struggle if that makes any sense, okay? It's just like developing any new habit. You just gotta put a little bit of effort into it every day. And that's why I like to use Sundays as my planning day, okay? It kind of gives me a refresh. I think about the week ahead. I'm like, okay, I got a handle on this. I know I've got a, a heavy load on Thursday and I really gotta stay focused, but I'm mentally, I'm preparing myself for it. I hope that answers your question. It's just, just keep at it, just keep trying. And it'll work for you when you, when you make it a part of your daily routine. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So every day you should be looking at your, your calendar, checking off. Oh, I love red check marks. They are all over when I get stuff done. Like this is my week. Okay. It's pretty crazy. And when I do something, I check it off right away. And so what I do is I typically don't put more than three really important tasks in my day, okay? Bite size, don't overwhelm yourself with thinking that you're gonna be able to get 10 things done when realistically you can only get three things done. So I space my tasks out through the week. If I see that I have a really big gap in one day, then I'm like, okay, that's the day I can use for studying or you know, writing my assignment or whatever it is. Make sure that you're not overwhelming yourself with too much in one day because then honestly you're just setting yourself up for failure and you want to set yourself up for success okay great all right um and like i like i have my red check marks it is so satisfying when i check things off so use a color <laughs> write in pencil but use a color that you're going to be like done done and then when you look at your week and you're like oh wait i forgot one thing or i didn't get that done then you move it into a time block that's going to work for your for you okay awesome let's keep going here um again don't overwhelm yourself with doing too much okay um taking on too much thinking that you honestly and i'm i'm talking from experience that you can conquer the world in one day it's unrealistic you have to develop the habits okay i just want to go back to the chat here um what are some good tips of staying organized in a busy work and school schedule along with personal life? I'm worried with online classes, I won't be able to keep myself focused enough even in my own separate office. I hear you. It can be a bit of a challenge to uh, stay focused, especially when you're doing online. Um, so what I recommend, again, just give yourself the space and the time that you need. Don't think about what the next thing is until you've completed your task. If a priority for your day is to get online and do your course, that is your priority. That is number one, okay? And if you just think of it and you have to like one thing at a time, okay? That will take the anxiety off of you, the, the stress. Um, and especially when you have a lot of <clears throat> juggling uh, balls in your court, <laughs> It can be a lot to handle. So that's why it's really important that you time block. Um, put your phone on airplane mode so that that's not a distraction, which is a huge, huge issue. I, I do it all the time. If I need to focus, I remove all distractions. I play some music that's gonna motivate me lightly in the background because I do a lot of creative writing and I need to stay clear of my, if my phone's buzzing, if my watch is tapping, if I have, you know, a lot going on, I'm not going to stay focused. And, um, you know, and, and again, work has to, um, it has to go hand in hand <clears throat> with your school as well. So again, set boundaries. Okay. I hope 
that you um, got something out of that. If not, just let me know if you need more um, clarification on that. Uh, what snacks would you recommend to have during classes? Great question. Um, anything that is whole foods, okay? Fruit, veggies, um, good protein, a protein shake even, something that's going to fuel your body and not completely carb drain you either. Um, so make sure you have lots of uh, healthy snacks on hand that are going to you know, give you energy, good brain energy. Um, and, uh, you know, that you're not going to, um, you know, sugar rush will just make you crash. Um, caffeine, I'm a coffee person. I'm never going to tell anybody not to drink it. So, <laughs> um, if you need it, but don't uh, survive off it. Um, and so, yeah, just have as many, um, whole foods as possible. Okay. Um, I'm going to go to one more point and then I'm going to check. There was a few more, um, comments that came in. Um, okay, so being online um, and doing everything virtually, we tend to feel um, a little bit of seclusion and isolation. It's really important that you try to connect with your peers as much as you can, okay? Even if it's a once a week check-in, or I'm not sure how it works for your programming, if you have group work that you do, or any way that you can connect with people, because when we feel alone, we think that we're the only ones going through what we're going through, trying to juggle and manage everything. So as much as you can, just stay connected. Like I said, once a week even, coffee chats online, meeting in person if it's safe, whatever that looks like for you, okay? Um, and taking frequent breaks throughout your day. Move your body, breathe, go outside, get some fresh air, clear your head, um, whatever you need to do to help support you in all that you have going on in your schedule. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Did I miss anything really important, Bonnie, in the chats? Um, Dylan had a question here. How do you create a schedule to do list that is effective but is easy to read? Okay, so is that digital or paper or both? I'm gonna say both, unless okay. Dylan wants to um, update his question there in the chat. Yeah, yeah, okay. Um, Okay, so what I do is, again, I, I, on Sundays, I'm looking at my week ahead. Um, when you handwrite something in your planner, um, it's, it puts a mind connection to what you need to do, okay? So um, it, it, you have to, like I said, don't overwhelm yourself with doing too much in one day. Be realistic with what you can accomplish, okay? Um, <laughs> I'm just trying to see. I hope that answered it properly. If not, just let me know if I didn't clarify that enough. Um, but you will establish your own way of doing it, of, of you know, keeping clear notes for yourself. Um, even if you open a Google Doc, as long as you remember to use your Google Doc every day. If you're not a writing, if you don't like to handwrite, you have to make sure that you are using your Google Doc effectively and that you're checking it all the time. My planner stays open on my desk. I never close this thing. Never. It stays open constantly. Okay. And if you have to use tabs or whatever to color code it, because when it's open and it's on the side of my desk, I'm always looking at it. It's always there. I'm like, okay, I know what's coming up. Oh, I got this presentation today at 10. Then I, you know, I have, um, I have some content writing I need to do later on. Two o'clock, I gotta run out and pick up my son from school. See what I mean? Like, so I'm already, I already know the flow of my day, okay? Um, okay. <clears throat> um, okay, so stay connected with your peers. You're not alone in your, pro in, your, in your progress right now. It's gonna take some time to get familiarized with this, this new normal. And uh, the more that you can stay connected with people and have really positive conversations and have compassion towards yourself, the more that you'll be able to really ease into, um, into what's happening in our new climate right now. Um, okay, and then come Fridays is a good day to take a review of your week, okay? So everybody wants to enjoy their weekend. I am the type of person that come Friday, I wanna just shut it down come the end of my day and I don't wanna to have to think about and stress over what's, what I need to get done over the weekend. 
So Friday, do a review of your week. What did I accomplish? What do I need to carry over? What's important that I really, really have to focus on, um, you know, over the weekend? Maybe there's an assignment that's due. Maybe I have to study for an exam or a test that's coming up and I have to put more focus into it. So Sundays prep for your week, Fridays do a review. Okay, if that makes sense. I'm gonna go to the chat and just make sure I'm not missing anything here. <clears throat> Carol, Devin had a yeah. question here. Could you suggest yeah. any tips for students coming into college after graduating from university? Oh, okay. So I'm assuming you've, you've gotten your university, you're coming into college. A lot of the same, um, I'm assuming you were on campus for university and now you're doing an online. Um, you've already, I know that you already have the skills. If you graduated university, you have the skills to transfer into college and to, um, and to bring some really new habits. Is to, if, if, if I can read this correctly, um, uh, coming into a new program or extending into something that you're, you know, you're, you're transferring, uh, perhaps that's gonna support your university degree or whatever that is, think of it as your fresh start, okay? Develop those habits, especially if you are doing it online, it's a very different experience than being on campus, okay? So again, you know, just take this as a fresh start for yourself. Um, don't overwhelm yourself with, you know, you finished university, now you're going into college. Um, you know, just like many people, we make big transitions throughout our lives. And if you look at the end goal, what is your goal? Why did you do this? Why did you choose to go to university, uh, to college? What is your end result with this next phase of your life? Make sure your intentions are set around that. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay. Um, ah, what is your best advice you can give those just coming into college from high school? Well, that is, uh, that's a big one. And I know there's a lot of you in here who are just coming out of high school. Um, first and foremost, um, congratulations on finishing high school and coming into this next big phase of your life. I know you didn't get the experience that a lot of high school students, graduates normally get. Again, this is um, a brand new opportunity for you, okay? Stay connected, reach out to your professors, learn. Whatever resources the college is giving you, look into it, tap into that, okay? It's there for a reason. And you don't wanna feel like you're slipping behind because you may not know something. Every new student coming out of high school into post-secondary education, feels the same way that you feel. You may feel like, I don't know what I'm doing. There's not a lot, you know, I feel like you're not being, um, <clears throat> you're an adult now, you know, like high school years are done and now it's time to level up, <clears throat> excuse me. So it's taking ownership of that, be proud of that, but you're not alone in thinking that I, you don't have to know and have it all together. And if you need the help, get it. Go and find it. Those resources are there for you and you need to be able to tap into that, okay? Stay organized, stay on top of your school and if you're having trouble, reach out, okay? The school is there to support you in any way that they can, okay? <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so Fridays, review. Uh, check off what you got done. You know, transfer over what needs to be done. Again, assess what your priorities are. If things are not important, you know, what's important for you? Your schooling, um, assignments, tests, if you have to juggle, if you have a, like a, a, um, a lot happening all at once, you need to prioritize your time. Okay, how much time can I spend on this course? How much time do I need to spend on this one? Because if you try to bottleneck everything, that's when it gets quite overwhelming. Okay, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, the next um, phase is to plan ahead for your month, okay? And now this is kind of like your big picture, okay? What are your goals for the month? Do you know what assignments, um, due dates, activities, exams, group meetings, what's coming up for your month, okay? Again, the further ahead that you can time block, the better it is for you to sort of make sure that you're not um, overwhelming yourself with too much in a day. 
Does that make sense? Okay, I'm just gonna go into the chat and make sure there's nothing that I'm missing. Um, hi, Carol Bonnie again. A common hi. theme that I saw in the last few questions seems to um, revolve about people who haven't been in school for a really long time and they're trying to jump back into it. So for example, they worked for a while or, you know, just transitioning and they're, you know, back in a new kind of um, college environment. Do you have any tips and advice on just how to stay organized and really, you know, jump back into, you know, the education? Yeah. Um, for anybody, for anyone that is um, coming out of the workforce and going back to school, kudos. I mean, that is amazing. There are so many people um, that are doing this. I know um, for myself, I made a major career change in my early 40s and it can feel really scary. It can feel very intimidating. You know, it's like you have to relearn what you used to be able to do. It's a very different environment now. So again, give yourself the time to understand what resources are available to you. Okay. It's a mind shift. You're changing the way that your mind is going to be taking in information. If you were working for a long period of time and now you have to transition into school full time, let's say, or even part time, um, ensuring that you spend the time you need in terms of um, setting your goals. Again, your whys, what are your intentions around what you want to accomplish? Okay. And Again, you're not alone in this. There are a lot of people who are coming back into second, third, fourth careers and they have to go back to school or even um, to uh, gain more education in their particular field, whatever the case is. Um, just make sure that you are using the tools and resources that are available to you through the college and um, time block. Again, if, especially if you have a family at home and you need to have quiet time and space to work. Uh, if you have children, whatever the case may be, it can be a bit of a juggle. But if you dedicate a certain amount of time during your day that that is non-negotiable time, then you will feel, you will start to get yourself into the habit of prioritizing that time for your school. Again, everything is building on habits, okay? Don't think too far ahead of yourself. Focus on what you need to accomplish now. Because if you think about too much and that you need to get your major to-do list done, it's going to be too overwhelming. Okay, chunk it down. What can I? What are the small steps that I need to do today to get me to tomorrow? That you continue to build. It's like a step. Okay, it's like stairs. You just continue building. Okay. Okay. Um, I know what we're probably coming down to the end of our time. So I'm going to just go over a few more uh, points and then I'll do a quick Q and A as well. Okay. So the purpose of having a good planner, whether it's online or digital and a good calendar is to keep track of your events. Okay. It's to keep track of what needs to, what your events are. The purpose of a good tr journal is to keep track of your tasks, your ideas, your goals, your to-dos and your priorities. It's a brain dump, okay? Don't just rely on keeping everything stuffed up here. I am I have to see it on paper and then I start to transfer it over into actionable steps, okay? Bite-sized, actionable steps, if that makes sense, okay? Um, and the beauty about having a paper journal is that it's not competing for your attention. All the other millions of apps that we have on our phones are constantly sending you notifications and we become desensitized to that. So having a paper journal helps to eliminate, you know, um, the desensitization that we've had around um, apps. They're a good tool to use to support other aspects of what you're doing. A good journal and a good planner or a calendar agenda, however that, uh, whatever you end up using, okay? Um, and again, working through your to-dos, prioritizing, you know, what needs to get done, time blocking, stay healthy. You know, if you have to, if you're working, you know, making sure that that work, your shifts are not going to overlap with your schooling because you have to, you have to understand what's important. And yes, we all need to earn a living. And if you're a student that has to work, 
you know, it's, it's a lot to carry, but you also have to be real realistic with what your intentions are and stay focused with that. Okay. If you, your intention is to graduate and to move on to something bigger in your career, then, you know, perhaps your part-time job um, is going to support you through that. But is that your long-term goal? Does that make sense? Okay. We're going to do a few more questions. Uh, I'm just going to kind of work backwards here. Or Bonnie, if you see anything that I miss, that's really important. Yeah. Yeah, Carol. I have a, a fun one here that I'm kind of interested to hearing the, the answer. Sure. Um, Riley had write, wrote, written, sorry, for one who is an avid video gamer, how do we balance the reward system? How do you turn like your favorite pastime from a distraction into a well-deserved output of happiness? Awesome. That's a great question. Um, it is a reward. And so what I like to do is when I have um, uh, a lot that I need to get done in my week, okay, I use my reward, like I set my goals. And when I reach those goals, that's when I reward myself, if that makes sense. So if I know that I have to do um, a content writing and I have sessions and I have a lot of things that are prioritized priority when I reach that when I'm like yes I checked it off with my red pen <laughs> then I'm like I'm gonna reward myself with something and it can be a bit of a transition to um, to go from having a lot of time on gaming to making it something that you look forward to once your priorities have been taken care of Okay, so use that as your end goal. That makes sense. Your end, your check mark. I got all my check marks. Yes, let's do this. I hope that's helpful. Any other questions that um, just looking through the chats? And I guess a follow up for that one is should we schedule time in our planners to reward ourselves? Should we actually block it into our calendars? Um, you know what? Leave the spontaneity. I kind of like to leave that spontaneous <clears throat> because what could the trouble with that is that you could just, you may not be able to put your full attention to all of the other tasks that you have to do um, to war. And then it, it, it kind of, you're going to, you're going to like skim by it. Let's just say, because you know that at the end of the week, I'm going to be able to get my reward. That makes sense. So you may not put your full effort into what needs to get done. You really got to put your heart and soul into everything that you're doing, right? And you want to be able to accomplish it with, um, with your full attention. And so when we know that, oh, well, I just got to just get it done so I can reach my reward, it, then we're not really putting a lot of intention. It's a balance. So just be careful with that. Okay. But I don't necessarily plan. I don't necessarily block out the time for my reward until I've accomplished my task. Perfect, Carol. I am conscientious of time because I know quickly yes. this hour has flown by and I know that there is sure um, amazing AC Day 1 programming um, still in place. Yeah. So I would like to take this time to thank you, Carol, for all that useful information. <laughs> and I've definitely um, taken down a few notes. I have my list here that I like to highlight yeah. instead of checking yeah. off. Yeah. So um, that's wonderful. And yeah. on um, behalf of Algonquin College, we want to give all of our students a huge thank you for participating. Thank you for, you know, taking that next step and, you know, wanting to learn about, or sorry, not learn, but hone in on your skills on staying organized. Yeah. And if you are interested in re-watching the session with Carol, um, Jess, our event facilitator, will be putting the link there in the chat. And I'm also going to plop in here um, Carol's social media. So feel free to follow her. She, got, she has Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and all of those fun things. And um, there was a few questions about the book that um, Carol had yeah. mentioned in. And um, there was also um, our event facilitator, Jess, had put in um, the information for that book there as well. So um, thanks again, everyone. Thank you, Carol. Lots of tips to keep in mind that I'm going to continue pushing forward. And thanks again to all of our students and stay tuned for the rest of the AC Day 1 programming, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you.